Uh, welcome back and uh, today we're going to, I'm going to take you a little bit through a calculator tutorial about if you're still having uh, a little bit confusion about using your calculator to solve these mole problems and uh, hopefully those will be answered here or you can at least get a better idea of the power kind of your calculator and how to type in exactly scientific notation into it. Um, so this is one of the sheets that I gave you in class a couple days ago, um, but it basically goes through how to solve or how to uh, set up or punch in a problem into a TI calculator, Texas Instruments, which most of you have, or a Casio calculator, which most of you um, who who don't have a who have a TI calculator, most of you have a Casio calculator. Um, so we're going to kind of go through these steps here. Uh, I don't know why all those say one 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 one, but that should be one two three so on. Um, but for a tech, uh, for a TI calculator, let me pull over a little TI, my TI calculator here. Pull that into the screen there. Make it a little bit bigger. Oh, messed it up. That's what I get for trying to fix that. Let me see. There we go. All right. So I have my TI calculator. Let me just clear it. Clear that out. All right, so I want to set up this problem, and I want to solve it. So it says convert 3.44 uh, times 10 to the 24th atoms to moles. My calculator keeps going away here. Let me fix that. There we go. All right, so I want to first be able to type this number into my calculator. All right, so I'm always going to type what they give me into the calculator. So 3.44. Four four oh delete all right delete clear uh, if I could ever do it three three point four four okay and it says times ten to the twenty fourth so what the times ten to the twenty fourth is telling me is that I have to put that um that scientific notation into my calculator and how my calculator reads scientific notation is on TI calculators there is a little button. And the little button is right here. It's the E. It says little EE. -E. All right. So once I type that in there, I want to press that button. So on this calculator, I have to press second to, to type that button because the actual button is a comma. But if I press second, that highlights the blue. See, second is blue there. That highlights the letters that are in blue on that button. So I'll press second and then the comma. And that'll put my little E up here, which I want which I want to be up there. All right, and then I will press, and then I will add the exponent, add the exponent 24. All right, so I, then I want to type in what the exponent is. It's 24. So let me type that in, 2, 4. All right, and that is entering that number into my calculator. All right, so we're, all, we're right here, um, 24. Collector should read that, it does. And now I want to press the divide key because to go from atoms to moles, you must divide. So divide by Avogadro's number, which is 6.022, second E23. All right, and that's what I have typed in my calculator. All right, so that's the language my calculator understands. Then I press Enter, and that gives me my answer, which is 5.71238791. So your calculator will read off this long, ridiculous rent decimal place, but I'm really only focused on the second or third decimal place. Alright, so it says here round the second decimal place. So here is my answer, basically. 5.71. And I'm always going to put a unit with that, and it's going to be moles in this case. Alright, so that's going to be most TI calculators are going to be like this. Um, let's look at the other family kind of TI calculators. Let me move this one off here. Alright, let's look at a couple other examples. All right, here's a, uh, two examples of TI calculators that have pretty much the same setup as the other TI calculator. Um, I'm going to type it in on the keypad here, type in the numbers, anything I need to uh, type in as far as the digits go, and then I will press the second key, and then you see here is the EE, and that's the button that I need to press to put in the scientific notation. So I'll enter the number, press second E, enter the scientific notation, and then 
enter what power it is, usually to the 23rd, 24th, 25th, 22nd power, or something like that. All right, so that's on uh, a TI. Uh, a lot of people have these TI 30X, or 30, some, some number in the 30s. Um, here's another example. You can't see it very well, but there is the E button as well. The only difference on this one is that you do not have to press second. All right, you do not have to press second on that one. It's the EE is the button, and uh, on the other previous two, EE was not the button. So you would just type in your numbers here on this keypad, hit EE, and then do uh, what power it's raised to. All right, so those those are. Pretty much all TI calculators have that button, and it's usually above the number seven. All right, so look out for the number seven, and it's usually right above, right above the number seven key. All right, is your little E, E. All right, so, uh, so what if you don't have a TI calculator? You might have a Casio, and this is a basic Casio calculator. And I think these may be a little bit even easier to use than um, the. Uh, uh, TI calculators um, because they have a cool little button and you don't have to press second or anything or shift or anything so for this one you would type 3.44 for the same example and then you would hit the times 10 to the X button and where that is located is down here so it's below the number 3 beside the decimal here alright so I would hit that times 10 to the X and then I would enter what the X is in that case it would be 24 and then I just enter it the same way I finish it the same way I did the TI calculator. The only difference is I'm using this button to enter um, to enter the number that it's raised to. And I should get the same answer, which is 5.71. So if you have a Casio, you can try to type that in there and uh, try to f uh, figure that out. Um, one more thing that I kind of want to go over uh, before on the TI calculators, um, before the way it reads it out is it'll usually give you this long number like this, all right. And, and a lot of people have been just putting that number three point or one point two three. You really need to put if there's a number here that is the power it's raised to, and it means times ten to whatever that power is. In this case, it would be ninety nine. I don't know why you would ever have a number that big, but just in case you do, that's what you put. Usually it'll be something like this will be like 22 or 23, something like that. So usually that number will be like 23 up there. All right, when we're dealing with the mole or anything with the mole conversion. So that's how I would write my number out. Okay, I if I just put 1.23, then that's going to be wrong. Okay, so just be on the lookout for that and just be on the lookout. I think this is how this one reports it over here, scientific notation. So it'll be like 3. This will be... 3.23 times 10 to the negative first. All right, so just be on the lookout for that, and that's how your calculator reports it. All right.